Cayuga, Indiana, February 16th, 2019. Paranormal investigator Dave Spinks and his associate Haley Sharp have traveled here to this small town to investigate a house that many consider to be the most evil place in North America. Referred to as Willow's Weep, it has been the site of a series of gruesome deaths since it was built in the 19th century. Brenda Johnson owns Willow's Weep. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Dave. She dismissed the rumors about it being an evil place and purchased it only a few years ago with plans to renovate it. This is my assistant, Hi. Haley. It's nice to meet you. But recent events have convinced her that she may have made a terrible mistake. To this end, she's invited Dave and Haley to come and investigate the house and see if her strange experiences can be verified. So, how are you doing? <laughs> Not good standing here. <laughs> All night last night, I was sick thinking about coming over here around this house. So tell us a little bit about the house, some of your experiences here. Well, when I bought the house, we started working on it. And then my son was working on the ceiling. The boards come flying off at him and hurt him. And I've been scratched in there, six claw marks down my back, doors slamming on you, banging underneath the floors. I understand there's been deaths in this house. Can you kind of go through those a little bit? Yeah. The man that built the house, he died in the bathtub. There was two suicides and then another hanging. And I heard that three men had been poisoned. About six months prior before I bought it, there was a man that he committed suicide in there. He fell into the chair. And that's where they found him? Uh, they found him what, a couple days later, right? A week. A week? A week later, OK. Do you think what's in that house is evil? Yes, I do. Without yes, a doubt. Yes, I do, without a doubt. If it wasn't evil, it wouldn't be hurting people. I don't think there's nothing good in there. The house was built in the late 1800s, correct? 1890, yes. So regarding the shape of the house, it's in the shape of a, a cross. Upside down cross. Strange. Yes, very strange. Was Willow's Weep really built to attract evil spirits? For Brenda Johnson, Dave Spinks, and Haley Sharp, the answer is a very disturbing yes. But why would someone deliberately want to construct an evil place, unless perhaps it wasn't meant to attract demonic spirits, but to entrap them in an effort to create a deadly warning that demons are real? Mercer County, West Virginia. Here on the bank of Lake Shawnee stands the abandoned remnants of what was once a simple, wholesome family amusement park. Opened in 1926, the park thrived for decades until it was abruptly closed in 1966. According to local historians, the reason for the closure was that what started as a playground for children became the site of numerous tragic and disturbing incidents. In the 1940s, a little girl was riding the swings, and a soda delivery truck delivered soda to the concession stand. And whenever he did, he backed up into the path of the swing, and he killed the little girl. She wasn't the only child killed here. There were several kids that drowned. One it was a really sad story, and I would hope it wouldn't happen nowadays. A mother brought her nine-year-old here and dropped him off to go swimming, and she went on her merry way. She came back when the park was closing and she couldn't find her son. And they looked for the son until 10 o'clock at night when they found him. His arm was stuck in the drain of the swimming pool and it had sucked him in and he couldn't get out and he had just drowned. There was another incident where there was a family out on an outing 
They was riding a canoe in the lake. The canoe overturned, and a little boy drowned in the lake. Before its doors were closed, six children had died in the park. And that might have been reason enough for the park to remain closed, but it didn't. In 1985, local resident Gaylord White purchased the property with hopes of reopening it. In the 1950s, Gaylord, my husband, worked here when he was in high school. He fell in love with it. So that was his wish, that someday he would own the park. And somebody had sent us word that the heirs had finally decided they were going to sell it. That's how we bought it. We wanted to have a children's ride park. For years, locals believed that the park was haunted, maybe even cursed. Then, in the late 1980s, the White family made some curious discoveries. We started finding a lot of pottery and Native American tools and arrowheads, stuff like that. So we stopped doing the bulldozing. We called Marshall University. They put together an archaeological team that would come down to the park. They started uncovering bodies. So that's when we knew we had a Native American burial ground on the property. A series of tragic deaths at an amusement park built on the site of a Native American burial ground? A coincidence? As far as paranormal investigators are concerned, not a chance. The first time I stepped foot on Lake Shawnee Amusement Park, I felt like I was being watched. It was an ominous, just negative feeling. I don't necessarily believe that places are born bad. I believe that things have to occur for a place to become negative in nature. People said whenever they come to the park that they see the swings move on their own, or maybe they see an image of the little girl that's riding the swings. Seeing only one swing move, when I look at it, no one else sees it, or it stops as soon as someone else is looking, that's pretty scary. More than scary, it's unexplained. We tend to be scientists now. All of us, we know everything that's going on. And when you see something that you don't understand, it gets to be creepy. Millions of people have had these experiences, not just hauntings, but also for ESP experiences and, and related experiences. These are questions that science should be looking at very carefully and closely and to say, oh, it's mass hallucination or it's this kind of explanation without looking into the experience itself, either the singular or the general patterns. It's not scientific. It's highly unscientific. The Blue Ridge Mountains, Georgia. Deep within this mountain range lies Lake Lanier. Millions of people venture to this popular vacation spot to relax and unwind. Despite the fact that every year, a shocking number of people drown within its placid waters. And many of their bodies are never seen again. If you live anywhere near Lake Lanier in North Georgia, you're gonna hear every summer all the deaths. There are bad boating accidents, and once somebody goes overboard, it's almost impossible to find them before they drown. Lake Lanier, from the surface, looks clear, but we hear it time and time again when we respond to these drownings. People will say that if he didn't go in the water, come up, struggle, and drown. He went in and never came back up. And this happens time and time again. This lake seems to take people in one goal. Lake Lanier is 26 miles long. It has 700 miles of shorefront. And it's tempting to attribute the inordinate number of fatalities to the size of the lake. The fact is, there are lakes of commensurate size in northern Georgia that don't have 
half that number of fatalities or accidents. So clearly, there is something about Lake Lanier that is cause for alarm. Since the 1950s, it is estimated that more than 600 people have lost their lives in Lake Lanier. It is such a staggering number of fatalities that for decades, many have come to believe that these waters may be cursed. Even though there's a lot of people around, there was just some strange vibe about the lake. I feel it's a majestic body of water, but you can't deny that there's something odd about Lake Lanier. When you actually get into Lanier, you get a feeling that you're not alone when you should be alone. Yeah, I don't feel like someone's reaching out to grab me, but the water feels thicker than it should. And what I mean by that is a lady fell out of a boat and we actually witnessed it. And we ran over there and pulled her out of the water and she was very upset and she said, I'm so embarrassed. And I said, don't worry, we, we see people who do this all the time. And she said, no, you don't understand, I'm a lifeguard. And she said just when she found herself in that water, it was just like molasses. So all the things that we see in this lake, it finally got so bad and scared the locals so much that we think maybe we're just stuck with a curse we have to live with. Could the numerous fatalities that have taken place at Lake Lanier be the result of a curse? It may sound far-fetched to some, but for decades, researchers have been examining the possibility that Lake Lanier could be harboring the power to inflict harm. And according to their investigations, it may have something to do with the history of Lake Lanier. Lake Lanier is the largest lake in Georgia. It's a man-made lake meant to provide water and power to the surrounding communities. They actually made it by flooding a valley that had a town in it, Oscarville. So they had to relocate the people that lived there, and then they just drowned the entire town under water. Oscarville wasn't the only town that was affected by the building of Lake Lanier. In the 1940s and 50s, the U.S. government acquired the rights to more than 56,000 acres of land in Forsyth, Hall, and Dawson counties to make room for the 38,000-acre lake and more than 700 miles of shoreline. This included several small towns, and the remains of these communities are still submerged beneath the surface of Lake Lanier. When they built the lake, they left tons of structure in the water. We've got concrete, roads, bridges. We've got a racetrack under there. We've got standing timber that stands as high as 40, 60, 70 feet from the bottom. There seems to be a great deal of debris in the water. So it's not an ideal place for people to be swimming or boating or jet skiing or partying. The fact is, it's a dangerous place. Authorities claim that many people drown in Lake Lanier because they get caught in the debris lurking beneath its surface. But researchers studying the lake believe this is only part of the story and that the source of the dark force drawing people down into its murky depths is a Native American burial ground that was submerged by the lake's construction. Back in 2007, there was a drought, and the water went way low. And because of that, they found an area called the Samore Mountains, Indian Mountains. It's considered a sacred area that belonged to the Native Americans. The creeks and the Cherokees, Lake Lanier was built by the Army Corps of Engineers. And according to the Army Corps of Engineers, they removed all the bodies while they were creating Lake Lanier. But back when they were building these lakes, they didn't have ground penetrating equipment. So there's a great likelihood that there are bodies of the Native Americans under the water of Lake Lanier. Could the presence of Native American remains beneath Lake Lanier have a connection to the unusual number of accidental deaths there? Has the Native American belief in the power of ancestral spirits cursed Lake Lanier? Certainly among Native American traditions, we have a, a widespread belief in curses, particularly uh, land-based curses. And this connects to an overall sort of belief in animism. 
that the material world is infused with spiritual aspects. Now, many Native American traditions have long-standing, very deep beliefs about how to treat dead bodies and how not to disturb them, and how not to disturb burial sites. The desecration of those is held in Native communities to bring on a lot of bad spiritual energy. Is it possible that Lake Lanier is home to dark spiritual energy? Perhaps. But what's most surprising is that even though this lake may be cursed, people continue to enter its waters every day. There's world-class divers that will not dive Lake Lanier. We have 11 to 14 million people a year that are coming here and taking their chances. In spite of the fact that there has been somewhere in between six and 700 drownings on this lake. I'm not saying that there's a curse, but I'm saying there's definitely some bad energy. And if it's not cursed, maybe it should be. Uinta County, Utah. Here on 512 acres of rugged land lies a remote cattle ranch. But according to local legends, this desert landscape is also home to a creature of unspeakable evil, a creature known as the Skinwalker. The Skinwalker is a shapeshifter. It can become many things, a fox, a coyote, a wolf. There are these recorded stories of bipedal creatures that are walking around with wolf-like heads. The locals on the reservation, they won't talk about it because even mentioning the name of the skinwalker invites these things in. Skinwalkers, shape-shifting werewolves who dwell not in remote forests of Eastern Europe, but in the remote desert regions of North America. Skinwalker Ranch, 1994. Experienced ranch hands Terry and Gwen Sherman purchase the ranch and the surrounding area. Almost immediately, they find themselves face to face with something they would later describe as pure evil. One day, Terry had, had gone to check on his cattle and noticed this extremely large, what appeared to be a wolf, walking around his property. It grabbed one of the calves by the snout and began to tear at it. So he pulls out his 357 Magnum and shoots point blank. And the wolf doesn't react. It doesn't appear phased at all. So he grabs his deer hunting rifle and shoots the wolf to knock it down. A piece of fur and flesh flies off of the wolf, but again, completely unfazed. And at this point, the wolf is kind of trotting off into the distance casually. Leveling his rifle, Terry cautiously followed the wolf's trail, only to discover it had disappeared. In the days and weeks that followed, the Shermans began to wonder if what they encountered was a normal wolf or something more. In the case of the bulletproof wolf, what's interesting is that wolves are not native to the state of Utah for, I think, the past 100 years or so. The werewolf of legend is described as looking very much like a regular wolf, except much larger. And oftentimes, it is said to be sort of bloodthirsty and cunning. We have lots of interesting legends around the world. For example, in Russia, they're known as the Vrokolak or the Bodark. In France, you have the Lucarou. In Scotland, the Wolver. And in South America, the Lobazon. And even in countries where you don't traditionally have wolves, you have similar legends. For example, in India, there are were tigers. And in Africa, were leopards and were hyenas. And even in Mexico, were jaguars. We have to acknowledge that the notion of a shapeshifter, like a werewolf, something that combines the elements of human and animal together into one single body, from a scientific perspective, is quite troubling. But the fact that these legends are so widespread is quite intriguing. An enormous, bloodthirsty, cunning wolf that also happens to be bulletproof. Is it possible that the Shermans encountered one of the werewolves that may have been haunting Skinwalker Ranch for centuries? 
And if so, what physical evidence is there to support such a fantastic notion? There has been numerous reports of cattle mutilations that occur not only on Skinwalker Ranch, but the entire Uinta Basin. Many of the accounts of animal mutilations from Skinwalker Ranch describe animal carcasses that have almost been surgically dissected. Certain large cats can make very clean, precise wounds, things like mountain lions. But it is notable that you have so many accounts of weird livestock mutilations from Skinwalker Ranch. This is very hard to explain in terms of the natural world. <laughs> 